Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another beautiful day with us on Live with Lloyd. I am your host, astronumerologist Lloyd Strayhorn. As you see, um, coming up in a few, he hasn't quite arrived in studio yet, is a longtime colleague. And just speaking of that, just literally spoke his name, uh, Dr. Phil Valentine. The brother is right on time. And um, so we're going to be talking about a number of things. But the main thing is his webinar that's coming up on this Sunday, the 14th. It's going to be an eye opener. It's, it's going to be, you know, it's listen, everything can be all peaches and cream. All righty. And I think if people look at what's going on right now, things are kind of tight. But anyway, we're going to have Phil Valentine to discuss it. And I'm going to be discussing a couple of things, too. But first of all, I want to let you know that today's show is being sponsored by my good brother, King Simon. All right. I think we all know who this brother. He has helped me in so many ways. Phil, almost anybody who in our community, he has always extended a hand with his humanitarian self. So I always give honor to and respect to him. Uh, he is the sponsor. And also... Our sponsor, too, is Manifest on Purpose with Miss Kimberly, who my the thing I love is she says the God in me loves the God in you. And I think if we all take a line from that and look for the God in each of us, I think there would be less drama on this planet. Seriously. And also. Uh, Jazz Aphrodite is sponsoring the show. Her and in fact, her. Uh, Six-week program starts tomorrow from 7 to 9. I'm going to tell you, I signed up, all right? I ain't going to front. I, I did that. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to wait, okay? I'm telling you straight up what I did because let me tell you why before I bring uh, my, my metaphysical colleague on this metaphysical genius. Between January of last year through the thir 31st of 2023, over 1,500 banks have closed. Understand what I'm trying to say? When I was talking about late last year, about this year being the eight, the eight of finances, but the eight is the opposition number to the United States, it would affect the finances. I, I, I'm just trying to tell you. And so you can see why I signed up because people are going to want to know where every penny is coming and going. And this is why I'm saying y'all need to get on board this, this Excel data program to learn how to keep tabs of your money. Um, it's interesting. Wells Fargo, uh, U.S. Bank, uh, uh, who is it to? PNC, uh, Bank of America. Those banks in particular have been closing, in particular in the state of California and Michigan. And they're creating now what is called a desert bank uh, or banking desert, I should say, banking desert. What it simply means we're in a neighborhood, in the center of that neighborhood, you got to go out at least 10 miles to get to your money. Think about what is just being described by that definition of a banking desert. If you live in the heart of your community and you're in a banking desert, it means in that definition, you got to go at least 10 miles to go get your money. So I'm saying earlier, as I was saying, we all have needs. But, you know, if we want these wants, I should say, but we all have needs that we got to deal with. So needs are going to take priority over wants. So y'all can want the most lavish cars. Y'all can want to keep up with the neighbors, the neighbors' latest bags and fashions and shoes and watches and bling blings and all that stuff but i'm telling you those who try to keep up with that pace you will be left behind in a way that may devastate you financially that will be practically hard to recover so i'm i'm gonna bring on my good buddy i'm gonna stop running my mouth because this is my man here um and by the way his wife has put out a book too she's got a book coming out so we're going to talk about that too we're going to talk about a lot of things hold on Right, Phil? Right, you are. <laughs> Phil, it is good to see you. Phil, there's a lot of craziness going on. Um, 
I'm going to digress a second. There's this this viral thing going around with uh, Cat Stevens. Yeah. And him talking about some things happening. But this is something that I took from a piece that came across my 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 attention the other day, and it's from Frances Cress Welsing. She says, white supremacy is telling our men and women to hate each other as well as themselves. And at this rate, very soon, our women will be teaching their girls to hate black men, and our men will be wearing dresses. Now, mm -hmm. this was 20 years ago. Yep. Yeah. And, and her teacher, her mentor, Dr. Neely Fuller, Yes, exactly. That. And that's where she got that from. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in fact, he took her under his wing and mm -hmm. she just ran with it. Yeah. So she has about close to maybe 1,500 hours of recordings yeah. of her lectures, which is extremely rare to get a hold of. Oh, well, yeah. But yeah. the thing she said then, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, really? really? You know, who would ever thought guys wearing dresses and Mm -hmm. You know, come on, you got to be kidding. Right. Our sisters hating the brothers. Come on, you got to be kidding. Mm -hmm. Is that leading up to something that we don't know, Phil? I know there, you know that in this eight year that going into the so-called age of Hapi, which is the age of uh, Aquarius, mm -hmm. uh, that's, so what's happening is this is the age where all truth will be known. In fact, the age we just left when capsuled into a one or two word phrase is I believe. And the age of Pisces is I believe. Yes. So that particular age was where uh, religion and, and the, the structure of thought around a deity outside of ourselves uh, and those who were the priests, the Kohans, the, all the rest of the people who actually managed that inst institution of thought that is now dis dis dissipating because the age of I know is questioning this dogma. And so all dogma, whether it be political, religious, social, everything is coming apart and a whole new paradigm of understanding who we are as humans, who we are as spiritual beings, all of that is now coming out on the table, but you know that you and I and a number of other brothers and sisters have been at the forefront of everything that Cat, Steve, um, Cat Williams have been saying. Yep. For the yep. last 25 years, everything that he's saying, but we were talking about Hollywood, the whole nine yards, all of that is now coming to the surface. We just needed somebody from that community who had the integrity and maintained his, what you will call spiritual virginity came back and told us exactly what was happening. And now those who had sold their souls, literally, to this Khazarian mafia who's running this, who's bringing in their culture, because I'm gonna cover that in the, uh, in the webinar. We are not dealing with our culture. We are being superimposed with a culture that came out of uh, the, uh, the, the Khazarian empire. And they were known to be criminals. They were known to be people who hijacked and killed people who were along the Silk Road during that time. And it was Russia and a couple of other um, places like the Ukraine and other uh, countries around them that drove them out. And they scattered and went into different parts of the world. And so now we have taken up their culture, which is, you know, the things that we're seeing and dealing with right now with all of the the, 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 uh, the stuff that's coming out of uh, Epstein Island, everything that you're seeing that they've been doing, the fact that they've been taking pictures of, 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 um, of high f uh, officials in, in, in government. Uh, yep. they, they deal with the entertainment uh, community because they know that they had to control culture. They had to control black culture because black culture, our music, our very demeanor, everything that we do liberates the spirit. It makes you want to know more about yourself from a spiritual perspective. That's why they pushed what they call soul music back into the church where the soul came from. That's yep. where music came from. They pushed it back into the church and now regulate the church through the IRS. Do you know it's the IRS 
that actually ordains our ministers now? What do you mean, Phil? The, the 501c3. They are made to, to say that they cannot politically attack. In other words, for them to get the 501c3, they cannot deal with the politics of the time. I heard something like that. Mm -hmm. They have to take an oath. And that's why you see the TG snakes. I've been calling him that for the last 10 years. Everybody knows that. <laughs> and you see um, a, a Creflo Pimpadala. Everything. I gave all those names to those people 10, 15 years yep. ago. Yeah. Because yep. what you're looking at essentially uh, is a structure of, so of, of a social structure, an economic structure, a political structure. It had nothing to do with what we as the autochthonous black and brown and copper tone people taught the European when he came here. You have to understand that there is a, a underlying creeping sludge of, of humanity that is right now siphoned itself into everything that we're doing, everything that is good, everything that has to do, because their motto is the only way to take over and to rule from our religious perspective is to use evil as a tool because they do not believe in life after life. They do not believe that at all. They believe their heaven is here, which is why they have a satanic worship ritual. And I'm going to get into the fact that you have to understand that Sat or Saturn was once their son. So everything having to do with Saturn, which is the, the, the planet of um, of uh, life lessons. In other words, mm -hmm. you have to, mm -hmm. you, you got to, they're going to, it's going to, if you don't take up the task of your life lesson, it's going to beat you back into that particular. And that's exactly what they are. They are the taskmasters of evil. And they're the ones that we are, and, and you know, when the creator uses uh, cycles of rejuvenation, when as a naturopath, you have to understand that when you're doing a healing and cleansing, mm -hmm. there is a crucible that you must go through, a pain, suffering. We have a thing called orthopathy. It's an old Greek word, which means correct suffering. So when you're dealing with healing, if you do not know how to correctly suffer while the body does what it does to save your life, then what you do is you fall to the pharmaceuticals, the pharmaceuticals. And what they do is they suppress the expression of divine healing, which is what your cells are doing to remove the obstacles to your health. The body is actually made to design to heal itself if you leave yes. it alone. Yes, but you have to guide it at this particular time, if you have to understand that correct suffering and orthopathy is based upon how you suffer so that you do not overload one organ over the other. Because sometimes the body will choose the organ that it chooses in order to offload the diseases based upon your behavior, your diet, and so forth. And then what you have to do now as a, as a knowledgeable naturopath is to teach the person how they may best use uh, natural substances, uh, cayenne and certain herbs. You don't yep. want to use too many herbs. You want to make sure that the, it, you mitigate the, the overload in one so that you disperse the healing process throughout the entire body. A so balance. It's traumatic, yes. So that's what we're watching now. We're watching Cat uh, Cat himself. did. I couldn't believe that he read that many books. He read as many books as I did when I was coming up but at a much earlier age. This guy is super intelligent. But see, he's a Virgo, and that description is I analyze, and he's yes. a number two. And yes. it's very detailed. They don't mm -hmm. forget nothing. As That's it. And now this I analyze is working through the time of I know. So he's <laughs> now broken down everything for everybody to know. You see? That thing has almost got about close to 40 million views. And it was only yes. out there a couple of days. Uh-huh. And why not? because he's speaking everything that we were supposed to be speaking. And just like a, a plastic uh, or some kind of uh, plastic uh, type of balloon that's been trying to hold back, it's now popped. It's now opened up and Cat has now blown the lid off of what Hollywood illusion, and you know the Holly 
was used as by the witches to cast spells. That's why Hollywood was, uh, the wood of the holly was actually used. That's why they say Hollywood. So he essentially, uh, uh, with all of what it is, his stuff was so good and so ahead of its time that at least three or four comedians were copying him. And because they thought he wasn't going to make anything of himself and they weren't going to, he wasn't going to be yep. popular. <laughs> and he was only five foot five, so they said, yes. "What is this guy going to do?" But you, you know, know the, have you noticed the little people or the people under six feet are the ones that are actually doing something? Look at Prince. Hmm? Yep, sure. You know, yep. and, and and you look at look at look at um, Alphonse Capone and yeah. all the rest of these people. They were the small ones that everybody took uh, advantage of, as well as uh, ne uh, ne underestimated. And that was also Napoleon in their French history. And Napoleon, right. You know, so, just, just goes mm -hmm. to show. Well, I like what, what Cap was doing and saying, and he was showing. And the thing about it is his intelligence is so high that every time that, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Shannon Sharp? Yeah. Would give him a scenario to work through because that would be the counter, the counter narrative to what he was saying. Mm -hmm. He already had the backup answer to that. Yeah, he could go three and four and five levels deep on everything he said and bring receipts. And now things are coming out of past performances. Yeah, uh, a lot of the people he spoke about are now responding. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And his generosity of... knows no bounds. His um, there was one uh, I forgot the name of the, the the comedian who said he had just finished a uh, a show, and everybody said you know very good, very good, very good. And then he was people coming backstage to congratulate him. Woman came back there and dumped uh, a package in his hand. And of course, you know, with everybody around him, he wasn't going to look at it. He was still paying attention. When everybody left, he opened up. There was a thousand dollars in there. And he said, "Whoa!" And then it was not until maybe ten, five, six, seven years later, when somebody else told him that somebody did the same thing for him, came to find out it was Cat was in the audience, saw what he did, and did that. And then they had this guy, Boozy, that my son just turned me on to, ex-criminal, some kind of gangbanger, said that Cat just up and gave him $15,000 to take care of himself, I guess, when he came out of jail. He is extremely financially well off. He's mm -hmm. very, very smart. Yes. Now, he might act in the way he does in a performing character oh, no, on he, the yeah. stage. Yeah. But, you know, it's also he, Prince, Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, where they just thought they were performers. These were brilliant men. Yeah. They owned their own music. Mm -hmm. And all yeah. three of them have also one thing in common at the point, too. And I think they were Jehovah Witnesses, too. Yeah, they were. Mm -hmm. They left no will. Yeah. And they left all no the will. vultures would come in yes. to, to swoop up to, to, to deal with that. But all yeah. these men were brilliant. And by the way, with Prince, his numbers was a seven, two, and five. With Michael Jackson, his numbers was the two, seven, and five. <laughs> and with Cat wow. Williams, his number is the two, seven, and five also. Really? Yes. Oh, man. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's why we need you around, brother. You have to <laughs> drop these jewels. And you know what I like about him, too? He has two, I think he has two or three um, uh, of children that he had from his wife. But all the rest he adopted. He had ten. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's quietly. about family. Yeah, we but he's doing it quietly. And that's what's blowing everybody's mind. He's not out there shaking and baking and doing these things. Only when they told him, when they stole from him and, to and started to rip him off and do all the things that they did, he said, you know what, that's it. Yeah. He chose Sh Shannon. He chose uh, Sh uh, Shannon Sharp's show because that's the only show he found that you sit down and have a conversation. Because he said it was really a safe heard. space. Yes, it was. Right. That's the word. A safe, a safe space. space. Right. And I mean, he put <laughs> a whole yeah. lot of people were, were kind of like probably oh, yes. giving calls. Yeah, there was probably calls in that community all night long trying to make sure that their back was covered. But mm -hmm. here's the thing, too, getting to the economics. There is this thing that the well-to-do, the millionaires, but particularly billionaires, are building billionaire bunkers. Yeah. For example, 
Mark Zuckerberg is building a bunker in Hawaii that's worth $270 million. Right. And so what's so fascinating is, to give you an example, I, I showed some of it last week. This is just an example of one bunker, okay, mm -hmm. with layers. This is another bunker here, too. Mm -hmm. Another one. Mm -hmm. um, do these multi and billionaires know something we don't know? Ain't going to help them. Yeah, this, brother, I said the same. Hold up, hold up. Let me hold up. Let me, let me. <laughs> I said the same thing <laughs> because because when it goes down, yep. You think not unless somebody's got an inside track that can tell these billionaires that listen, the bomb is going to drop on Friday at three o'clock, and it's Monday, and y'all need to get up out of here, get secure in them bunkers. Mm -hmm. because when it hits, it ain't going to be like that. Listen, mm -hmm. if people can't get out of out of Dodge in a traffic jam, wow. how are they going to get out of a city in a panic? Yeah, they do. Yes, they got private jets, but they got to get to the... To they got to the get to the jet. They got to get to the helicopter, <laughs> not unless it's on their property. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and huh? the, thing, the thing is, you see, all of this preparation is predictive programming in the sense that there's an inevitability once your mind is set on what you think is going to happen. And that's what metaphysics is about. If you are planning, as they did, the deep state, what I call the parasitic elite, this, these parasites know what is to come because they've planned it. But I remember a saying of my father, every time I would tell him what I'm getting ready to do, he would say the best laid plans of mice and men, gyne after glee. What is gyne after glee? Well, it means that it always falls apart. Right, because the term I heard, the best laid plans go astray. Same yeah, thing. It did. Same so, thing it just yeah, indeed. Right. So it, no matter how prepared they think yeah, they are for what the, the, the coming uh, repercussions of their own actions, because they're trying to do this to cleanse the earth of at least two to three billion people, they already put that down in their mandate. They want to kill off at least, at least three quarters of the human population to revise the earth, to re-green the earth. But then they talk about the fact that they have to deal uh, the carbon footprint. And, and the carbon, what they're talking about, the CO2. The CO2 is what the plants need to breathe. And they want to cut down the CO2. In fact, they, 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 what they're finding out, the, the ecologists are finding out and the scientists are finding out is that the, the, it's like nature has set up a synergy with the technology that sets out a whole lot of carbon. It just seems to regrow the forests that they burn in order to do all the things that they do. So the trees are growing back, the forests are growing back, the, 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 um, the rainforests are just green, you can't even see through them anymore. Everything that nature needs to do is to, 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 to adapt to man's infantile behavior in his search for some kind of nirvana within himself and without himself. Nature always compensates. You, you know, they used to call that, when I was in school, the Malthusian theory. Malthusian, yes. Yeah, Malthusian, that, mm -hmm. that through earthquakes and pestilence and natural floods and disasters, nature will balance everything. I cannot see any particular group, of particularly who with that mindset, think that Mother Nature is not, I'm going to always hedge my bets with Mother Nature. Oh, yeah. I don't care what the plans are, how many bunkers y'all got, all this Mother mm -hmm. Nature work. Mother Nature can swallow up everything as if we never existed. Indeed. Indeed. And the thing about the climate climate change and all that nonsense, I'm going to, do, I'm going to show you where it originated. It originated in, in London, in, in England, with, uh, with, the, with the prince and uh, some, from some magnet, an ex-Nazi, and they said, you know, we don't have any more enemies and the type of technology we have will wipe out the entire white race. So what do we have to do in order for us to curtail? And in a short uh, capsulized form, what they were saying was, we need a new enemy to fight. Well, we, we, we can't fight each other anymore. We can't fight things that we did. Let's find out who the enemy would be. Oh, let's make man the enemy. 
So once they made man the enemy, they said, okay, well, let's make it so that he is some type of pyra on the planet, and then he is destroying the planet, he's doing A, B, and a third. And what we will do then is initiate and instigate and implement policies around the fact that we have to lessen the carbon footprint. They have to get rid of most of the carbon issuing footprints. Well, what are you made of? You yeah. at your core are carbon. So when they talk about erasing the carbon, they check them by erasing you, not the stuff that's coming out of smokestacks, you. And that's been the plan for a long time. And I'm going to show you how it started, where this whole thing about climate change really began. It began with the Pilgrim Society out of uh, England. The Pilgrim Society is, a, they're like the mafia, they're like the, the Masons, they're like the Rosicrucians, very powerful. All the way up to the prince, Prince Philip. Most people you know, don't talk about them. No, no, I was just going to say this is, this is amazing, and and it also brings to mind the things that are going on, on the the continent of Africa, Ooh. because there is an awakening yes. there on a whole lot of level. Mm -hmm. And I've been saying for the past couple of years, when Napoleon went through China in the 1800s, right. he referred to China as a sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. I said a couple of years back that Africa is the sleeping, sleeping giant. giant. And it's indeed. beginning to wake up and it's not going to be a pretty picture. Oh yeah, well South Africa alone with the uh, with uh, Julius Malema. Oh man, he's a firebrand. The only thing is, I'm hoping that he will bring a whole other concept to communism because what he's doing is socialism and communism. And that's why they're fighting him so hard. If he gets into the seat, into the presidential seat, that whole thing, the reason why the whites are so terrified at this time is because their particular version of democracy does not include the black race. Because I remember- at one, at no, all. no, I remember one time that um, a professor was being uh, interviewed from South Africa and that's during the time the apartheid was very, very heavy. And they said, well, why, why, are you, why is the white race down there so uh, averse and so hostile to the black people? He said, because if we loved black people, like we loved ourselves, we would disappear. And he was right. This is what he said right out, right out that white people fear that their particular phylogenetic construct will disappear and they are disappearing they're not they're not re, re, revising themselves because i remember there was something called the, the nubian protocols and the nubian protocol said that if you participated at any time in genocide nature takes the energy that you took from her and takes it from you and you disappear exactly. into ether. you know to me there's a human math i call it and it's mm -hmm. this when you do the wrong things for the wrong reasons, you get the wrong results. Mm -hmm. Indeed. That's, that's, but you get the right results by nature. Yeah, with the right reasons. Indeed. And also, in speaking of Africa, Burkina Faso, with, mm -hmm. with the brother oh. Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Murray, he yes. took France out, took the gold back. I mean. But did you see them come back begging him? Did you see the begging part? When yes. they got on their knees and, and, and asked for forgiveness? Yeah, and they're coming back now saying, please do not block us off. And the whole thing is that I'm a little bit worried about Russia being there, China being there, and being the backstop to what it is that they're doing. You know, they're backing, they're backing up what's going on because Russia now is going to take advantage of the resources where they couldn't because they were blocked based upon... They're back that. in 1992. Exactly. So now they're going to be taking on uh, the Russians and the Chinese and the Russians are self, I mean, Putin himself is of the family of the Khazarian mafia. You know? So there is this plan, this game that's going on right now where we're dealing with controlled opposition. Controlled opposition means you think that this person is for you and they're putting up all front about, yeah, you know, rah, 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 against the person that you know to be the enemy. But the two of them are working behind the scenes together. You see? And that's the Trump scenario we got going on right now. All of that I'm going to be showing about how 
uh, uh, the uh, how opposites or the Hegelian dialectic is working to make us believe that we're waiting for some kind of Messiah to come out of the political structure to take us out of this hell that we're in. That this 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 I guess this mentally deficient person that they put in there purposely, like they did in Russia, when the when the, uh, the mafia, the, the the deep state wants a particular society to fall, they elect an imbecile or somebody so old and, and senile, like they did in Russia, that it was easy for him to just, you know, get up and they say, sign this, sign this, sign this. Yeah, yeah, without question. In that, indeed. Indeed. Phil, mm-hmm. how did you head in this direction? I know we are both our paths have crossed back in the early 80s. That's how long we've been doing yeah, each other, okay? Yeah, yeah. And you just taken whatever you have to a whole nother level. Hmm. What well, I don't know what happened more than my father was very much into politics. Mm-hmm. And he would talk a lot about how the president was, what it is about politics, how that if I wanted to change anything that I would have to get into the structure to change it. You can't change it from without because being that he was military and he was special forces in military back in the day, he said that uh, the outer ring that they put, they had said he had the several layers that you can't get past that those in the know, those who are in the, in, in the, in the rooms, that they're the ones who have this protective layer that you can't fight from the outside. Because I got arrested, um, what was it, back in, geez, 1969, because I was, uh, I was had a school boycott. And we were marching for better grades, for better this. And that's when I was going to Wingate High School. And so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when my mother, my mother came to bail me out, you know, they said, uh, you know, she was, you know, she's pissed because she was very much into politics herself. And so she was pissed with the cops and so forth, blah, blah, blah. And so I went down there and, you know, they, they let me go. I was on probation for, I think, a year or some stuff like that because I was rowdy and ruly and, and the you know, yeah. And so I got my taste of what it was like from the, the higher structure. And that did not allow, and that, that essentially girded me. I had no fear after that. You know, I didn't really care after that because I saw what injustice looked like. And my mother worked against injustice for a long time. My father taught about injustice because he was the one that inspired me to read so much because he read all the books. He had a, he was a history buff. Yeah. And uh, my mother was the griot. She told me all about our families on both sides, going back to King, uh, King Philip of Spain. So, I mean, we had a whole lot of, I had a whole lot of inspiration. And then when I began to get into the metaphysics of what life is about and began sitting in these libraries that belong to these uh, so-called upper Europeans, I went down to the uh, library down on Wall Street that was the Lucius Trust Library. I went down to the, um, <clears throat> the one on 72nd Street uh, in Manhattan um, that was the one for Blavatsky's uh, library. Uh, and I was sitting in there, I joined the Masons, the Rosicrucians. I was searching for knowledge, not to become a part of anything. I was just searching for the knowledge. And the more and more I read, the more and more I saw uh, things, the more and more I began to decipher against metaphysical reasoning, the more I began to become more political in the sense that we can tell you what's getting ready to happen as as they're playing out a particular so by the by the second quarter i know what the game was going to be and i know who the winner was going to be <laughs> but you know in which direction it was going indeed i know who was going to be officiating too <laughs> <laughs> but before we take on the main topic of the webinar mm-hmm. there's a young lady that you know very well mm-hmm who has a book forthcoming. Can you tell us about this, Dr. Oh, Alani? Oh, Dr. Alani, my wife, my beloved wife. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, this This book is, a, it's a page turner, like they used to say. And she is reading, uh, she's writing about her experience that we had last year, where she actually died and came back. 
Yeah, and in fact, this is another part of it. So people yes. can see how beautiful she is <laughs> and whatnot. And I love how the book is designed. But as you were saying, yeah. she had a near-death experience or was near-death? Yes, she is near-death. Actually, I had to revive her. I'm reviving her while I'm down 911 at the same time. And um, the thing is that, you know, because she lived a more pristine life than even me, she is more fastidious about her health than anybody I've known. And her exercising, her yoga, she's Bikram yoga. She's doing all kinds of things constantly. And she's one of the healthiest people I know. But I came to find out that her mother and her brother passed from cancer. Interesting. But I didn't know that. And then she told me that. And then what happened, it was interesting how when, when she actually began to do, uh, went into the hospital and, was, and actually began to be stabilized, they couldn't find out what was wrong with her. They had to take her blood samples and send it directly to the headquarters of, at the NIH, the National Institute of Health, to find out. Then we found out it was a kind of uh, cancer that was in the mitochondria, dealing with the mitochondria, which is like, what? I never. And then she'll tell you more about what that is. And she took the, uh, the you know, what, what most people say, well, why didn't you start a program? I would say I was ready to start the program naturally. But what it is is she was so far gone that if you get shot with a gun, you don't start juicing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the next day. Yeah. You got, to, you got to stabilize first. So she went through the most rigorous and most, I mean, completely horrendous form that they could possibly give. And that's why you see she lost a lot of her hair. And I, I shaved my head bald when her hair was gone. And now her hair is growing back and my hair is growing back. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. <laughs> and she, I, I just helped her design the cover. So she wanted to. I mean, it's so beautiful. I was thinking, who designed that visually? It's almost like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Yes, that's it. The phoenix you know? rising from the ashes. You see down at the bottom of the uh, picture. Yeah, because that was the, the sense yeah. I got from it. Yes. And so she's going to now show people who are at our age where, you know, you're, you're my elder. She's in her 70s. I'm in my 70s. And she wanted to show people that there is life after after a concept, conceptual death, and the way she had sub 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 um, the subjective when she started putting out how to prepare your life and health for the unexpected, and that's the thing because we we did not expect this to happen at all, and because and the doctor said because she lived the life she did. She is like one of the two or three percent that lived from this particular cancer. Everybody else was supposed to die. Yeah, it was a given. Yeah, and and so we, you know we deal with the juice plus, and uh, she's more fastidious with her health than even me, and so she actually, actually she was primed for this challenge. She was priming herself for this particular challenge that would have taken her like it took her mother and her brother. And because she was so fastidious before, she was so about her body and health and the whole nine yards driving me crazy sometimes about what she's ready to do. So now, whatever- I'm tell her when she gets on the air. Oh yeah. And, 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 and whatever her innate programming was towards that from the time she was born, that's what brought her to this particular point. So I'm very proud of her. Now, the book is coming out soon. Can people get pre advance orders? Yes, the, she, they have to pre order by going to newlifeneardeath.com. Just new, new life, life, go ahead. Near death, one word, dot com. New life, near death. Right, right, take it from the title. Yes, right from the title. New death. Don't put the from. Just put new life near death. Yes, dot dot com. Com. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want everybody to order that. So when I have Dr. Uh, Nalani on, we can we can really do that. And people will have books in their hands. So Indeed. some of them can see. Because you know it's interesting in selling life insurance, there's this resistance because nobody thinks that anything is gonna happen. But I've never met a person that didn't leave this planet alive. No Indeed. one. <laughs> no one. You know, now I think it's going to start again. No time no, soon. Gonna happen. No, no. <laughs> but when, it's funny because, uh, you know, when my mother was alive, bless her soul, she had her own kind of 
anxiety problems. And my sister couldn't be with her. She would choose me to be with her because anytime there was an emergency, I became extremely stoic. I, I, there's, there's, there's like, I, I, can't, I can't get into the emotional part of it. Sure. I, afterwards, afterwards, I got to decompress. But I get into this particular place where it's like, boom, that's it. My knowledge, whatever it is I'm doing, I know what I need to do at this point. And so when it happened, we were, she was very, very weak. She couldn't even do her locks because just raising her arms made her tired. She said, something's wrong. And we have a friend who's a doctor who told her, get to the hospital, get stabilized. So as we were getting into the car, she started feeling weak. She lost her knee. I had to help her into the car. And then all of a sudden, boom, I saw, boom, it was, she lost consciousness. And then when I tried to check her breathing and her pulse, there was nothing there. So I had to resuscitate her and bring her back. In the meantime, dialing 911. She made a video uh, uh, talking about that. Yeah. It actually gave her. Uh, yeah, resuscitation. Uh, custody, resuscitation. Exactly yeah. right. So and so, that. yeah, but again, that was, that's all I said. Boom. Get busy. Do what you have to do. Blow. That's why my father, because he saw the type of thing I did when uh, I had a fight on my block where we lived in Sterling Place. And I, uh, I, I almost, I confess this, I almost killed this guy. Mm -hmm. Because I was beating his head against the the sidewalk because two of them jumped me. One I threw over my chest and hit him. And then the other one grabbed me. I threw him over and he fell down. I jumped on him, grabbed him by his ears and began pounding his head. It was one of the elder brothers from the community who hit my ear. That's why my left ear is gone. He hit me like that to get me off of him. And mm. my father came out and after they said that, my father was, you know, he's a stone cold, you know, soldier killer. And he, you know, he understood. So he stood there and he told me, he said, you're going to have to be able to control that particular part of yourself. You have to understand what it is that you, that, that particular place you go where you don't care about life or death anymore. You got to use that for a positive uh, situation you have to become. So I got into meditation. And it's redirected kind of, that energy. Yeah, and redirected the energy. And it just made me become completely stoic during the time she was going through her trial. And I think that the universe put us together for us to have that, that particular experience. You know, Phil, it makes such a difference when we have fathers in our lives. Oh, yeah. Because oh, I yeah. had a very strong father that didn't yeah. take no mess from oh. nobody either. Especially if he's a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> he's no, his brothers were soldiers. Mm-hmm. But his mother, my grandmother, sent him as a young man south to New York City. That's how I happened to be born in Harlem. Oh, so wow. he can live another day. Interesting. Oh, wow. It was like that. I, I had to bounce a quarter off of my bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the military training. Yeah, that was the military boy. I tell you, if I didn't have my <laughs> shoes shine. Especially when I was going to Catholic school, I had my shoes shine. My pants had to have a crease that you could actually cut. Uh, with a, with a knife. It was a knife to cut. Yeah, I yeah. can't open that. You know, and but your father was military. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And he was staunch about it, very much so. And the thing is, he was more than military because he belonged to a group called uh, called the Wolfhounds back in Korea. And the, the, the Wolfhounds was, had such a reputation against the North Koreans that whenever they found he, that the Wolfhounds were in a specific area, they would move their whole squads or, or, or battalions away from that particular group, from where they were in that particular sector. You know, and he's gotten, when he came back, he had two bullets, one bullet under his heart that they couldn't remove, and some shrapnel in his back. And he was being put down for the Silver Star for saving this senator's wife, life, along with some people. And back then, it was very racist in the uh, in the military at that time, in the 50s. Tell me about it. Right. Yeah. And so what happened was, because of what he did with his squad, even the white boys that were in his squad were actually pissed that he didn't get that Silver Star. And they were actually petitioning for him to get it. Okay, I want to get to the, the main thrust of this. This, uh, this image is like <laughs> kind of depressing when people see it, but it is for a reason. Yes. Yeah. Explain. 
Well, the aristocracy of evil, what they call the redux, the redux means that I'm repeating the title and, and actually giving you another perspective of that. Back in the early 90s, I did something called the aristocracy of evil, where I began to break down uh, the what's been happening to us on the planet through Western civilization via the control of the Vatican. Mm. And mm. so the Vatican essentially were, was the aristocracy of what we knew as the uh, civilization or the society of the, uh, of, of the of America. <laughs> yes, I see, uh, what's his name is dealing. Um, so uh, what I did was I, I did something, I did another lecture called the new old order. In other words, uh, the old order that is controlling us ne is never changed. The old order essentially is just revising itself. So what I wanted to do was to bring everybody up to speed on what the old order has done to revise itself, to give itself a whole new look, you see? So here we are right here. I'm going back because of what we're about to face in this year, 2024, mm -hmm. in this eight year. Mm -hmm. I, had to get, I had to get people to understand and understand what the history of the same thing that you see the, or everybody has seen go viral with Cat Williams. He essentially has taken it back to the beginning where he was, where he can remember to experience. He brought it back and he said, here's what it was. You all were actually going along, getting along with these people, thinking that this is what it was. It wasn't that. So in, the, in this sense, when I say the origins of the deep state, I broke it down to the who, what, when, where, and why. But the thing is, you have to understand who it is that's actually uh, manipulating and motivating and manifesting everything that we're about to be challenged by in 2024, going all the way through to 2030. So I said, who? Bloodlines of Esau. Now, in the biblical references, you're dealing with Edomite and Esau. These, you'll know who came out of Europe. Okay? What? What are we talking about? Genocide, ethnic cleansing. When? As we speak all the way through 2030, which is essentially a jump-off point to 2050, which I covered back about uh, 2014 when I spoke about what they were going to do by 2050. Mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. And then what I, what I wanted to also bring into place was after I went through from who all the way to why, which would be world domination, I had to deal with how they were going to do it. So the how comes later. And that's why I'm asking people to be more, to be more patient with this particular lecture and seminar, taking notes to understand who and what, when, where, and why of everything you're seeing is not what they are telling you on the news broadcasts. It's got nothing to do with that. The news is the propaganda that these people who are dealing with the who, what, when, where, and why, and the how, they are the ones that's writing the script for what you, the what they call the thousand-headed ass, or the useless eaters and the useless breeders, that's us. Yeah. That's who they consider us to be. So how are they going to corral us and how are they going to eliminate us? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about, all the different weaponry they're using besides the psychology. Food. Yes. Water. Air. Yes. 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 Everything. Everything that they're doing right now has a terminal point. These, it's, it's all, everything, everything they're talking about right now that we're getting ready to into is, is terminal technology, I call it. Terminal technology. It has a lifespan. That's what they used to call planned obsolescence. Yes. 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 Well, that's exactly what they have for the new human. Planned obsolescence. What is that planned obsolescence? They're telling you they're going to take everything from you and you will own nothing. And, even and be happy. And be happy. Yeah. That's how they're going to do it. They're going to definitely do it by making sure that you become so psychologically rigid. But you see, the thing about it is that these young people coming up in Generation Z, <clears throat> they, are, they are 10 seconds away from information happening around the world. Whereas you and I coming up, we had to make maybe a week before we got it. Yeah, yeah, easy. So these kids are getting information instantaneously. And some of them, 
basically looking at your lectures, my lectures, are now beginning to say, wait a minute, something doesn't smell right in this kitchen. And they're looking at politics in a whole different way. And that's, that's what you got to get to the genius of this parasitic elite. They know who to put up and who and what to say and to make sure that the masses essentially adhere to whatever hero they create for them, which is why I tell people we got to watch for Trump and what he represents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't mind because what they did is they dangled the fruit in front of us for four years. Here's what it looks like when we give you everything you have. And he's the one that we're going to show you is the one that's doing it. And I was all for that. I said, well, the dude sounds like he's right, right up on top of it. The one thing about him too, his family, if you trace his family back, they didn't own slaves. If you trace back his family, they were working with Tesla. So I began to say, okay, well, maybe there's something going on here where these white folks is waking up and they're beginning to understand. And then you begin to find out what's going on with him, which I'll discuss. I can't discuss it, make cause your place to... Uh, your, your your platform to have you problems. know I know you know yeah. I know mm -hmm. so you, once you once you get into the webinar you'll understand what I'm talking about it's for you of course to make your own decisions if you want to deal as far as into political you can't be said you didn't let them know that's right you can't say we didn't you can't say we didn't and of right. course a lot of times people say well you contradict yourself I said I am a contradiction <laughs> aren't we all and we all paradoxes, <laughs> and, and and we're all learning at the same time. Everybody who has been to my university knows that you remain the student. Yeah, You're the great. You want to continue to learn and grow. You oh, remain the student. You you cannot. There's no way. Uh, life is a movement. It's a flow, and if you stop and say, "I have learned," that means you die at that point. Because there is more knowledge to be gotten. You do not have all the knowledge of the universe. Yep. You have it within you. But the reason why it's being siphoned out is so that that knowledge of the universe is being transmitted to God as a feedback through your experiences and your emotions. You are the avatar of God. God cannot know itself. What you call God encapsulized and limited into this word called God, which is the all the, the, the universe and, and, and the power behind that universe, you've lifted to these names that have nothing to do with what it really is. And so you have now, because, because you've been created by God and you come through understanding that you are God, you now create God in your own image and likeness. And then you've defeated the purpose and then you create a religious or a relegation process around your own particular idea of God, and now that becomes a religion. So unless you have the name of God spoke to you within, then how can he be your person? How could somebody like Jesus be your personal God? So he's like, I got a personal relationship with Jesus. How's that? With who? Do you yeah. know this man? Yeah, how do you hook that up? How you hook that up? You know, was this some kind of, uh, um, yeah. you call that, um, when the succubus or incubus that came in and took your your spirit, or, or is he, is he a walk in because your your you know your energy just died down and he walked into it? No, the only reason you know Jesus like that is because you've become so emotionally involved in this particular concept and the music and the entire environment where you feel that you can let loose. It's an emotional charge. You got your endorphins going off in church when you get into the music and so forth. So that got to be Jesus. No, it ain't Jesus. It's you. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Reverend Ike talked about, the God within. Oh, that's Ike was a real preacher. No question. He no was question. a real preacher. These are the fools over here, uh, uh, Creflo Pimpadala <laughs> and T.D. Snakes. These guys, they ain't no real preachers. No, they took they took the, the prosperity idea around him, which was a spiritual concept, and tried to turn it into a, a, a temporal concept, and just blew the whole mission. Now, Reverend Ike took it to a whole nother level, yeah. and that's how ahead of the curve he was in terms of the religious body around him at that time. Mm -hmm. And they all, you know, he had a lot of enemies with him. They hated him too. Yeah, they hated him because he was freeing minds. Yeah, and a good-looking brother. Oh yeah. Him. You know that energy. Oh yeah, and it's, know, it's, like, it's Rolls Royces and, and stuff him. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he didn't. He didn't hold the secrets to himself. No, 
He told in you fact, what his son do. just published his book that people should get. Oh, yeah. I, I might talk about that. Yeah, definitely. Mm. But let me say this too, because we have we're going into the final phase. How can people attend the webinar? Well, I, I thought um, did you have the link? I sent the link there as well. Uh, no, but I'll make sure I have it for Wednesday. But let me let me do this. I mm -hmm. have your banner. Is is any of this? Hold up. Let me say something here, buddy. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to get to that because the last banner I did was from from the last show. Is there any way to get through here? Yeah, you could, the best thing to do would be, you know, these are all informations for contacts for me. What you need to do is if, if anybody has a problem and, and they don't have the link to register, they can always contact me at my email, which is sanoon777 at gmail, which is S-U-N-N-U-777 at gmail.com. Can you read that one more time, Phil? Please. Yeah, sure. Sanu, which means doctor and companion in the ancient Kemetic language. So it's S as in science, U as in umbrella, N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy, U777 at gmail.com. All right, good. So good. That, that, that will then, and then what you do is just put all capital letters, just put webinar in all capital letters in the subject box, and I'll know to send you the link. Okay, good, good. And that is this coming Sunday, the 14th of January. Yes. And uh, it just starts at uh, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Yes. Eastern Standard Time. That's right. And it's, it's going to be it's going to be the whole day. It's yeah, pretty much. Um, I, that's why I'm saying to people, uh, Lloyd, this is a PhD course. It's a PhD course in recapping and revising and changing history as they've been taught it. And for them to look at what happens, what's been happening now, not as a, not as a, a, a sequential uh, uh, event of history that they've been told is history. No, we're gonna go back to where this started and show you all the players, who they were, who they, uh, they uh, galvanized into their particular way of thinking and doing things. And you'll begin to understand why we're in the condition and circumstances we're in today more than you'll ever know. And, you, and when you look at news, MSNBC, CBS, NBC, not, all of them, you'll see the lies as they perpetrate it. You'll see what they've been given to people and most of the people and all of what they call the goyim or the cattle. And yeah. What about yeah. so what it's going to do is it's it's not going to asperse be aspersion to anybody we're not going into anything like anti-semitism and, and and racism it has racism. nothing to do with that no it has nothing to do it's with that because in that ballpark in fact the political part of that um the the orthodox people who are orthodox jews hate that particular uh political wing of their of their um, their, their phylogenetic uh, legacy, they hate it. They do not. They do not even accept Israel. And these are the the the, the Orthodox Jews. Yeah, the, ones that are, the Hasidim that's in Brooklyn. Yeah, they, and they have a big conventions on. Yeah. Oh yes, big conventions on it. And the thing about it is, you find out that the you know they want to now they want to make the fact that um, they want to make uh, a Jew a genetic race which really? yeah now they, they israel has now uh i just read and it's going to be part of my uh my uh, discourse that they're going to try to change and, and to find out what a jewish gene is and it's ridiculous we know what it is it's a kazarian gene it's the kazars it's the mongol kazars that came out of the northern part of the caucasus mountains you know, Phil, you never, that's why I called you a master teacher and metaphysician right there. Okay. And you always a work in progress. Uh, thank you for giving me this valuable hour. Um, this was, this is a mind blower. Thanks. But, it, but it can't be said, viewers, we didn't have this conversation. Right.
We have to put it out there. And the, youth, the, the universe, as the ethers, the akasha, they know that this exists. Now it's for the children to actually ascend and transcend their thinking process and tap into the waters of the akasha and get this information for themselves, to be inspired in their own sleep, to wake with a whole new uh, resolve and knowledge of self and to be, to be guided from within by that, to understand the empathy of the world's suffering and to see the people that are being brutalized, killed, tortured, all of that has to be something that begins to stir the empathy within the human race. If we don't have that, then we're doomed. No question. Listen, I want all of us to give our best to uh, Dr. Nalani mm -hmm. and uh, whatnot. And as uh, soon as she is at that point, uh, she is going to be one of the first guests that I will have. I'm I'm sure a whole lot of people are waiting to get on, but I've been there since, since last year, so I think oh, I can talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? As far as I'm concerned. Yes. So, thank you, brother. This is, you been are an pleasure. amazing human being. Thank God you. bless you. Same to you, beloved. Thank and you I'm for really, that. really, really. Yes. And so I'm um, with that, I'm going to make a couple of announcements and, uh, I'll talk to you later and make sure I'll make sure I get that link and post it on Wednesday's segment for sure. All right. God Thank bless you. and, and say you. all the best to the to the queen of the house. Give thanks. Okay, give thanks. All right, everybody. This was um, you know, every listen, you know I do numbers and whatnot and whatnot, but every now and then we need to have a reality check. And as I said, well, first let me get some some things out the way. Uh, my numerology course, this is one of the least uh, or the most cheapest that they've had in that sense. But because it is a price that's cheap for all three courses, it's very, very powerful. It was started in 2020. It has always gotten top ratings. It is now in about 100 different countries around the world, uh, a little over 7,000 students. And this is the only time I plug it. Believe me, I'd love to get the full retail price, but I want to get the knowledge into as many people's hands as humanly possible. And by the way, my course is on all seven planets in this universe. And, and that that's a good feeling um, to do that. Uh, also, I want to let you know, please sign up for the free monthly newsletter. All righty. And I've also done something very new that you can see on TikTok, where I break down the the months, the month of January for each of the individual zodiac signs, and talking about specific uh, highlights and challenges during that month. So you'll find that interesting. And of course, uh, a star eight that is getting better. Uh, we just every uh, time we do it, and I thank you very much. But Wednesday, Wednesday, speaking of finances, we're going to have Dr. Yana Woodhouse. And she has been also one of our more popular uh, guests on talking about the finances because this is no joke. This is the year, as I explained to you before, 1,500 banks, over 1,500 banks have closed since last year. And we just got into this year, 2024, which is why I'm telling everybody, you might have something you want to get but this is a year where there are things you need to do. And for me, this is where I start tomorrow. Uh, this is sponsored also by Jazz Aphrodite. And uh, I've signed up. I've made my commitment. I plan to know how my money is coming and going from the penny to the dollar. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, also, I want to thank uh, Manifest on Purpose, Ms. Kimberly who has a great podcast. Y'all really got to chime in and see that. The sister's deep, okay? And then, of course, my brother, King Simon. So with that said, I do want to thank all of you very, very much. Uh, Y'all take good care. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of days, all right? And by the way, I'll give you a little snapshot of how this course was. I ain't going to tell you everything because I only be in the week one of, of six weeks. But I'll tease you enough to say, see, you should have done it. And by the way, she's made it easy to pay in installments. So don't let the price throw you. But anything worthwhile, you got to pay for. Okay, we do it with everything else. So we might as well do it among ourselves. So don't be stingy with yourself. 
Put some, invest in yourself. That's what this course is about, to invest in yourself. Those of you who make the effort, whether you got to do it in parts to pay, all of it to pay, you will be the wiser and the better on the other end of 2024. For those of you who say, oh, well, what happens? I'm already telling you <laughs> the banks are closing and people have been in situations where they can't get their money. And I'm not saying it to cause uh, a panic or anything like that. I don't have that kind of juice. And it's not about that. But I'm saying for my viewers, my Live with Lloyd family, I'm trying to pull your coat as to what you need to do financially. So when we come out next time, we can celebrate, but it's on a whole different level that we didn't spin our wheels or whatnot. So everybody, I do want to thank you very, very much. Uh, by the way, um, for those who want to see the segments that I broke down for the monthly forecast for January for each of the signs from Aries to Pisces, you can see it, go to TikTok and you can view them there. All righty. Also, if you want to sign up for the tick, the class I have that's slightly different on TikTok versus on my Live with Lloyd a series, this is where you can get it too. And of course, please pick up my audiobook. I understand the code was uh, not used, but I've made sure that that was straight. I got that straight uh, last evening. So please, for those of you who, if you don't want to read, then if you just listen. And that way you can walk around, do things around the house, drive and whatnot. And oh, also, a lot of these shows that you've listened to will be on my Numbers in You podcast. So I have so many people to thank. And all of this is coming as a result of the many, many people that have assisted me. You know, so if you're all thinking, oh, man, this is all Lloyd Strayhorn. No, it is not. It is not. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if so, I should be walking on water. And I know that's not happening. So anyway, I do want to thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday with my wonderful guest, Dr. Yana Woodhouse. And we will continue. And then next week, we'll get into other things, too. And for those of you on the comments section, I'm going to review everything. I'm going to give some acknowledgement somewhere. I haven't figured it out yet. But just give me a chance. And everybody, I want to thank you, uh, as I said. and that's all I'm saying. This Welcome to the real world. That's all I'm saying. Welcome to the real world. Have a good night.